Welcome to the FOSCAM MJPEG camera setup guide for your Mac computer. Uh, today I'm actually going to be going over how to install or initially install your FOSCAM IP camera uh, on a Mac. Uh, currently you can see I'm on uh, Mac Lion OS X. Uh, if I go to about this Mac up here I'm on version 10.7.5. Um, also just uh, running on Lion currently but you might be on Snow Leopard or mountain lion that should be fine. Uh, the, the guide should basically cover the, the, the basic steps on how to set up the camera initially. So uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, get straight into it. Uh, right now I have the fi 8910 w which is a MJPEG camera from FOSCAM. Um, and this guide is going to uh, cover how to uh, basically set up uh, this camera. Uh, you have to well, right now I have my my camera set up to the router. I'm actually on a uh, Apple Airport Extreme um, currently, so the camera is connected uh, with a power cable. It's powered on. Uh, the Ethernet cable is plugged into the back of the camera, and that Ethernet cable is actually going to the back of the uh, Airport uh, Extreme uh, router I have, and uh, this computer that I'm on currently is actually on. Uh, that same network, which is just called FOSCAM's Wi-Fi network. It's the same network that the camera is on. And uh, you need to make sure that you are actually on the same network as uh, the, the router that your camera is connected to. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to see the camera uh, in this setup and you won't really be able to follow along. So you really need to be connected to that, that same network. Uh, so what we're going to do is go ahead and get, get straight into it. Um, what you're going to need to do, first of all, is if you bought the camera and you have the CD uh, that came with the camera in the box, go ahead and, uh, and put that into your Mac. And uh, be sure to install the IP camera tool um, software that comes on that CD for Mac. Uh, if you lost your CD or you misplaced it, what you can do is actually go to our website over here at foscam.us slash tools dash support dot html uh, in any browser and uh, it'll pull up this page. And on this page, we have a lot of things like uh, our setup video guides that we're putting up. Uh, we have the CD installation software. We have basic guides. Uh, if you want to just uh, read through some of the guides instead of just watching this video, you can do that as well. Um, but for Mac, what we're going to do for MJPEG cameras, I have a FI8910W camera. So I'm going to have to download this software right here, IP Camera Tool Mac uh, MJPEG. And this is going to work on... Uh, any MJPEG camera like 918W, 904W, 905W, 909W. Uh, so don't worry about that. As long as you have uh, one one of the MJPEG cameras, uh, you should be able to follow along with this video. So I actually already have it installed. Uh, when you download it from here, it's actually going to install into your downloads. Or it's going to go into your downloads folder, and I've opened it up in Finder, uh, and I had it, it basically downloads here. And so what you would do is just double click it. And it's going to open up, and you'll ask it. Uh, or it'll ask you if you want to open it. You'll, of course, say open. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just double click on here, and it's going to pull up this box right here. And this is the IP Camera Tool uh, software box. And you can see already there's one camera listed, and this is the camera that's actually connected to the router. You can see the the name of the camera over here is anonymous. Uh, and that's usually going to be the name of the camera. It's going to be something generic whenever you get it, so it should usually say anonymous over here. And of course, you can see the IP uh, address over here as well for the camera. Uh, so what we're going to do first of all is we need to set a static IP uh, on the local network for this camera specifically because uh, we want it to always um, be able to be seen on a specific IP address. We don't want the IP address to be changing or anything like that because if that happens, then you know, even if you go through all the setup videos and you set up the camera completely on your network with port forwarding and everything like that, if this local address changes anytime in the future, what's going to happen is you won't be able to see the camera anymore remotely, and you know you'll you'll probably be kind of confused and you won't uh, know what happened. So we always need to make sure that we're setting a static IP address for uh, the camera, especially when we're setting it up for the first time. So what we're going to do is uh, highlight it by just clicking on it and then uh, we're going to right click and we're going to go to network configuration. So when you go to network configuration it's going to pull up uh, this box right here which has a whole bunch of numbers 
And uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and explain this uh, to you. So we have the IP address, and the IP address, uh, in, basic, in basic terms, the IP address basically uh, defines a, a device uh, on your uh, router. So any, any device that is connected to your router, whether it's your Mac, your, your Foscam camera, your iPhone, your iPad, all of these devices have their own IP address. So the, the camera was assigned this IP address by default. Uh, 10.0.1.4 and you'll you'll notice that if you see on your other devices if if you dealt with IP addresses before you'll know that every device has its own IP address and this last number is always going to change uh, because that's how uh, the router identifies each different device so the camera has a, a IP address ending in 4 but your your Mac uh, uh, or your your MacBook Pro or your iPhone or your iPad they might have an IP address of 10.0.1.5 or 6 or 7, something like that. So uh, every device has its own IP address, and for we'll we'll just leave it at that right now. So just the basic concept is important. So we're operating on this IP address here. Subnet mask, gateway, and DNS server all have to do with your router, actually. So what we need to do is just confirm that these numbers have come up uh, have come up uh, correctly and the and the camera set these correctly and how we do that is we have to go uh, into our network settings uh, in the Mac and uh, look up uh, if these uh, these numbers are actually correct and you might have actually not gotten an IP address like this you might have gotten something like uh, subnet doesn't match um, which basically just means that uh, it's, there's nothing wrong with the camera the camera was able to be connected uh, and and everything is fine but uh, what happens when you get that message is that these numbers are not matching up. So even if you got that, that message, go ahead and right click over here like we did and go to network configuration to get this to this box. And what we need to do is uh, go ahead and confirm these numbers right here in our router. Uh, so since I'm on wireless right now, what I'm going to do is open up system preferences. So I'll click here and then I'm going to go to network. So we'll click over here under the internet and wireless. Uh, category. I'm going to click network and this is going to open up the networking settings box and we see on the left side that we're connected by Wi-Fi and that's great so what we need to do is if we're connected by Wi-Fi we need to go to advanced and you can see the, the the network is the same over here so we'll go to advanced when we click on advanced what we're going to go to up here is TCP slash IP and over here you can see the same kind of numbers that we're seeing on uh, the network configuration screen in the, uh, the IP camera tool. And so what you want to do is double check these numbers to see if they're matching up. So for the IPv4 address over here, this IP address is actually for the Mac that I'm on right now. Remember I was talking about how each device has to have its own IP address and the Mac is actually assigned to 10.0.1.3 and so it's ending in 3 and you can see the router actually assigned uh, the camera 10.0.1.4 so we for, for the IP address we just need to check that the first three numbers are matching correctly and they are we can see 10.0.1 over here and 10.0.1 over here so that's great the last number we just need to know that uh, the every device is going to have the last number uh, separate there's you can't have two devices on your network that are sharing the same IP address, so every IP address is going to be different for different devices. Subnet mask, you're going to need to check that this is uh, set up completely, uh, uh, just how, how, it, how it looks, so 255.255.255.0, and we see that over here. And then router is actually just going to be gateway. Gateway and router is the exact same thing. So we see 10.0.1.1. And we see that over here as well. That's great. And the DNS server is actually usually going to be the same as your gateway. So whatever your gateway is, the DNS server is going to be exactly the same. And you can see over here, if I go to DNS, it's going to tell me a DNS server is 10.0.1.1, which is great. But usually that is, that's going to be always the case. Is the, the, the gateway or the router IP is always going to be the same as the DNS server. So we, we've seen this. We've, we've double-checked that. That's great. So we know that this information here is, is working correctly. So we can exit actually exit out of this. We don't need this anymore. So we'll cancel. And if you're connected by Ethernet, 
you would actually just click here and you would have all that information right here but it's not showing up because I'm not connected by Ethernet I'm just connected by Wi-Fi so that information would be right here and that's a little more simpler for you so you would see IP address over here uh, for the computer subnet mask would be over here and then the router would be the same 10.0.1.1 DNS server would be exactly the same so let's go ahead and exit out of that so we know this is all correct, uh, correctly set up uh, HTTP port uh, right now we're going to leave that uh, at 80 uh, but in the future videos of port forwarding uh, we're going to have to change this uh, from 80 to another port and the reason we do that is because uh, if you think about it in the same way uh, with IP addresses where every device has to have its own IP address uh, if you're forwarding ports on any device on your network every device has to also have its own port you can't have the same uh, port for different devices. So let's say maybe I'm setting up uh, two cameras or if I'm setting up three cameras and I see them all in here what I would have to do is actually set them up each with separate uh, separate HTTP ports. So maybe the first camera would have a port of uh, 8080 or 8090 and then the second camera would be 8091 and then the second uh, third camera would be 8092, 8093 and so on so on so forth. Um, so that's just a, a good concept to remember for later on. Uh, and then you'll see it down here, the default username and password or admin with no password. That's great. So we didn't actually have to change anything over here. Um, but you might have to change some, some stuff if, if, you're, if your numbers are different. Obviously mine are going to be different from yours uh, if you're running on, di on a different type of route or anything like that. Yours might be 192.168. 01 or 11 or yours might be IP address 10.0.0.1 or you know something like that so you can always go ahead and delete uh, and change uh, as needed uh, if you need to so if you do change any of these any of these settings be sure to go ahead and push OK when you're done uh, if you didn't have to change anything you would just push cancel but if you did push OK uh, the camera will probably go offline you won't see it over here anymore it has to actually upload those settings and then reboot after about 30 seconds so it will come back up uh, with the new settings that you installed. So we know that everything's set up and good to go so that's great so what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and double click on the camera to open it up in our default browser. So I've double clicked it and it opened up in Safari which is my default browser that's great and you'll see on the login screen we have uh, ActiveX mode as the first login for Internet Explorer and we don't have that because we're on Mac so we're going to be using the second login button which is server push mode so we're going to click on the login button here and it's going to prompt me right here for the username and password so what we're going to put in is admin and we're not going to put in any password here and we're going to log in and it let us log in it and prompt us again and then to see live video uh, all we have to do is click over here on the left side live video and there we go and we can see video great uh, no issues when we came to this screen we can move the camera around up and down left and right very very cool so that basically completes the the initial setup of the Foscam MJPEG camera on the Mac um, now what we're going to be doing uh, in the next video is uh, we're going to be setting up wireless uh, to make your camera wireless currently it's connected by an Ethernet cord but if you do want to make it wireless which most people do uh, be sure to check out the next video and to do this uh, quickly what you're gonna have to do is actually uh, click on device management down here and on the left side we have wireless LAN settings so you'll be clicking this and then from here you'll be able to set the wireless uh, settings in the next video so just be sure that uh, you can get to this page uh, easily uh, so go ahead and, and check out that next video and we'll see you there.